Red lights are on and 15 minutes of Tigua Type R Trophy gets underway for the first round of the season. And newcomer Don de Graff doesn't make a great start. Newcomer to the championship. He's dropped a load of positions. Joe Jessup last year's champion leads. Dan Chapman goes for second on the inside into Paddock Hill Bend. He started fifth and he's got to... Oh, no, he's a uh, big, big slide. That's the grass gone one way. There's another car. It's that Martin Bug that went the other way. He's in the gravel. There's a car's going absolutely everywhere. Is it Trafford King, possibly 42, that's stuck in the middle of the road? 14, Martin Bug in the gravel. Don de Graff is getting going. That's Joe Delgano with lots of damage to the front of his car. And I'm afraid it's all gone very wrong on cold tyres at Paddock Hill Bend. Uh, it's OK for the top three. Joe Jessup turns into... Uh, red flag, red flag. Yeah, as expected. Yep. Although a few of the cars, did, yeah, we thought two, haven't we, on the run up Howard Hill, I can see. Martin Bugs car in the gravel. So he and Don de Graff lost it and went sort of in opposite directions in the end. There are the red flags confirmation on, uh, on our screens. Red lights go out. The race gets underway then for 10 minutes. Again, it's not a great start from Don de Graff. So Joe Jessup's going to lead a great start from Dan Chapman, who flies up the inside. He's alongside Matt Wilkins and should get second into Paddock Hill Bend. Uh, they're still alongside one another, I can see. On the outside line, Wilkins is going to try and hang on. These were the drivers with the top three in the championship last year, and they're all dicing up towards the hairpin. I think de Graff is fourth. Everyone's safely through Paddock this time. Three abreast in the... The mid-pack, including uh, where one of the uh, newcomers, Luke Emmons. But for the lead, it's Jessup from Wilkins from Chapman. That's how they finished in the championship last year with championship newcomer De Graff in fourth position, but potentially quicker if qualifying is anything to go by. Yep, hard to tell. We're going to see uh, as the race uh, continues and a look up the inside there. That's down the order. A battle for second on up across the line behind uh, Jessup. Here they come. De Graff's at the back of this group now, um, having qualified on pole. Uh, he's fourth into Paddock, and he still is uh, there. Jessup, Wilkins, Chapman, De Graff, and a gap back to uh, Johnson and Musgrave and the rest. Yeah, Johnson started 11th. That was a great start from Jake Johnson, the uh, driver from Cheshire. Meanwhile, side by side for the lead. So Joe Jessup had a good lead across the line. He's been caught by Matt Wilkins, who's on the outside into Graham Hill Bend. You don't often see that move work into the corner. Sometimes you can get a better exit. So what was a good lead for Jessup has come to nothing. And the top four all together. There's damage to the side of Wilkins' car. A bit of trim hanging off as he rides the curb up through McLaren. And Marcus ran onto the grass on the inside. I noticed that um, De, Graff's, uh, De Graff had a, a, a lot front brake going into, uh, into the hairpin. But uh, that first four have made the breakaway. And again, Wilkins right on the tail of Joe Jessup up towards uh, Paddock Hill Bend. They turn right through Paddock. Up the curb goes Dan Chapman in third. But again, Wilkins has got a better run. So Jessup has to defend up towards the hairpin. Don de Graff, the only person really taking that wide racing line because he's at the back of the queue. So touching, not being the, attacked. Uh, touching the back bumper there was... Uh, third place car of Chapman just touching the back of uh, Wilkins Jake Johnson still the best of the rest the in side fifth. strike has come off uh, the bottom of the second place car it's Wilkins There's a big challenge for fifth in the background only Musgrave goes up the inside of Jake Johnson no, Musgrave did qualify ahead of him can't go through though Johnson after his Oof. good start stays fifth and behind Richard Lindsay versus Ross Borman. Borman on the inside gains a spot. Yeah, that was over the curbs. <laughs> Quite dramatic. And Lindsay's going to lose that here as well to the gunmetal car on the and inside. For the lead, Matt Wilkins is on the inside of Joe Jessup into Paddock Hill. Ben Jessup surely can't do anything for, about it here. So the double Donington Park winner last season goes uh, through. So Matt Wilkins leads. And here comes De Graff up the inside of Chapman into Druids. But he can't go through. Big gap then back to a huge battle pack for fifth place. But Ollie Musgrave's got himself ahead of Jake Johnson. Following him through is Ross Borman on the inside through the hairpins. After that good start, Johnson starting to drop back. But he fights back in towards Graham Hill Bend on the inside line of Ross Borman. Can't make that work. But uh, great racing in these opening laps. Yeah, it is. De Graff looks quick enough uh, from this distance, um, but he's got himself a bit boxed. Um, there's uh, Borman at the head of that next uh, squabbling quartet. Chapman's got past Jessup now too. So Joe Jessup, who was quick off the line, doesn't seem to have the pace 
necessarily, although he fights back on the outside line down the Brabham Strait to go potentially back into second place as they turn into Paddock Hill Bend. And the outside line, the Chapman's on the inside line, but it's very, very sideways, so De Graff could get both of them here if he has a good exit. Which Jarts to the uh, left-hand side of the circuit. Jessup somehow still second on the outside line into Paddock. He'd have been better going the other side, but he, the momentum were taking him to the outside. There wasn't any opportunity, I don't think, of switching his uh, uh, trajectory. Now, Jessup's, uh, in the, Jessup's in the 57s, a whole second slower than Matt Wilkins, who's got the fastest lap, a 56-1. He's got half a second or so away from that uh, record pace. I wonder if Jessup hasn't got the uh, setup that he was hoping for. Certainly hasn't got that uh, pace that Matt Wilkins was able to show, and it's seemingly Don de Graff has behind as well. But de Graff hasn't been able to move forward at this stage. For fifth, Ollie Musgrave coming under pressure from Ross Borman, who's having a good race. He started 12th. He's up into sixth position. Looks like uh, Trafford King did make the uh, start, didn't he? Despite that big damage to the uh, driver's door. And now Jessup's done the fastest lap, so... Uh, Lacking pace in the early stages. Now the aimshop.com fastest lap for Joe Jessup, a 56. Uh, it's not quite the fastest lap, is it? A 0.154, six thousandths slower than Matt Wilkins, who still ha does have the, uh, the actual fastest lap of the race. But Jessup is catching. He was a tenth quicker on that lap. But yeah, then Musgraves, Borman, uh, Wayne Flint, who come into the championship ahead of Jake Johnson as they turn their way through Grand Hill Bend. Down the Cooper Street. It's a line of about 10 cars in this group. Top 10 cars get uh, reversed for the grid for race two. Uh, Joe McMullen is the driver currently in P10, but he's got plenty around him. Behind is there Richard Jones in 11th, um, I think. Meanwhile, leads across the line. This time, Joe Jessup has done the fastest lap, and it's a new... No, it's a tenth away from a record time, but we're almost at record pace now. 55.438. And the lead gap comes down to four tenths of a second after the aimshop.com fastest lap for Joe Jessup. Who oh, dives up the it. inside into the hairpin, runs wide though, Marcus. Can he hang on? It looks like he probably can because there's no way around the outside at Graham Hill Bend when your, uh, your route's being cut off. And Jessup uh, did that really, really well. Still that uh, side skirt hanging off the side of the Wilkins car. Uh, in third still is Chapman. Fourth is De Graff. And a low probes on the inside up there, and they're going to slow themselves both down at this point, and which might open them to attack from Daniel Chapman. Yeah, great battle this is. Position changing uh, a few times, which you don't always see in one mate racing around here. So it's Jessup back ahead by 19 hundredths of a second from Wilkins into Paddock Hill Bend. They turn with Chapman sideways behind in P3. De Graff's dropped away a little bit. They've got a car to lap shortly. That was a, a bold move that Jessup made a lap ago up here at Druid. We saw the end of it. It was almost like he had to have one shot at it just to see and, and probably was just as surprised as we were that he went through. So Wilkins is again the attacker. So Jessup, who's got the fastest lap, leads. It's uh, 31 that they've uh, got to lap in the moment. That's James Ferguson, who I think is new uh, this weekend. A huge battle pack for fifth continues, and there's some touch in there too, as uh, Wayne Flint there is on the inside of uh, Ross Borman, I think. So Borman has lost out. Uh, is Jake Johnson got through? There's a touch there. There he sideways goes Wayne Flint. Joe McMullen got into the side of him, and that's going to give Richard Jones a chance to come up the inside of the pair of them as they go through Clark Curve. Uh, and then Trafford King is joining in. Can King get into the crucial top ten? Meanwhile, there's a challenge for the lead up towards Druids again. Yeah, that's right, and uh, tries both sides, still with that flapping, uh, flapping skirt, but look at this, Daniel Chapman is now right with them and looking really threatening. Down into Graham Hill Bend then, with Joe Jessup hanging on, uh, but by the smallest of margins, it seems whoever leads cannot get away, and then they come under pressure, but when they're the driver behind, as Jessup was earlier, now Wilkins, they're the quicker one, through Surtees up through McLaren and on the brakes in towards Clearways. We've seen challenges here before. There's two laps to go at the end of this. This is lap nine of the race and a tight line out of Clark Curve taken by Joe Jessup, defending from the Motion Motorsport run car of uh, 
of Matt Wilkins. Dan Chapman in their wheel tracks too. And diving to the inside is Matt Wilkins. A really ballsy move, but he's all sideways as they turn their way through Paddock Hill Bend. Uh, surprisingly, Dan Chapman isn't able to really um, attack after that. I thought the top two were going to compromise their lines, but that's what the third lead change we've had over the last few laps. And another very attacking uh, move, and Matt Wilkins back ahead. Yeah, that was uh, another heart-in-mouth job, wasn't it? But when the cars are so even, you've got to make these uh, last-second decisions. He's engineered his way up the inside and um, just kept his boot in. Yeah, a few weeks ago at Brands Hatch, we had some um, other similar one-mate race where there wasn't really any pass changing at all. This is really great stuff from the Type R Trophy uh, competitors. And now Dan Chapman is looking up the inside of last year's champion, Joe Jessup. He can't quite do it, though. Jessup covers off the line. There's one lap to go at the end of this. And Matt Wilkins going for three in a row because he won the last two rounds of last year at Donington Park. And now he leads onto the final lap here at Brands Hatch. But this race has been... A uh, difficult one to win, and he hasn't won it yet. He hops up over the curves through Paddock. Has a good exit, though. Extends his lead. Interestingly, Don de Graff has fallen a long way behind these three, so it's a three-way battle on this last lap. Yeah, it's almost like he's thought, well, I'm going to settle for this now. I, can't, uh, I couldn't live with them. There's no point overdriving. And uh, let's just keep it on the island. But uh, it's not over yet uh, as far as the lead's concerned. Between these top two, and the uh, only thing I'm watching brief is Daniel Chapman in third there to pick up the pieces. I wonder if Joseph was going to dive up the inside of Clearways, but he's got better of it. Can he get the exit? He's got a better run through the corner. He has. He's earlier on the power, isn't he? Yeah, we're going to have a race to the line. I think we are. Joseph drawing up alongside. He gets closer and closer up towards the finish line. They're absolutely even as they cross the line. It's pretty much a dead heat. Joseph's been classified as the winner by 37 thousandths of a second with the fastest lap on the very last lap. Remarkable stuff then. It didn't look like he was going to make it until the very last moments on that run to the line. Joe Jessup wins with what must be the smallest winning margin in Type R Trophy racing. Get in the aimshop.com, fastest lap on the last lap two. 0 0.037 of a second between Joe Jessup and Matt Wilkins. Third goes the way, Dan Chapman. Uh, Don de Graff with fourth. Jake Johnson got back to fifth. Well, I think it's his best result in the championship ahead of Ross Borman, Ollie Musgrave. Trafford King got to eighth, who I think probably started that from the back. Oh, and Andrew Cooper, uh, I think the director of the 750 Motor Club, I'm afraid, is in the, uh, the gravel trap. But that was a great way to start the Type R Trophy season. Possibly the best Type R Trophy race we've had, I think. That was fantastic. And that, uh, that fastest lap on the last lap, what was it, 55? Yeah, 55, 385. Yeah. Just missing out on the record. Let's uh, take a look at the results and that small winning margin of 0.037 seconds. Joe Jessup, the winner from Matt Wilkins. Dan Chapman was third. Don de Graff in fourth. Jake Johnson in fifth. Ross Borman was sixth. Ahead of Oli Musgrave, Trafford King, Joe Jessup. Oh, sorry, Joe McMullen, I should say, in ninth. And then Richard Jones, 10th. Just missing out on the top 10 was Wayne Flint. Richard Lindsay also dropped back to 12th. James Delisle and uh, Adam Huntley completed the first page of results. And Adam Parker, Luke Emmons. Matthew Duffel, Luke, uh, Lee Rickard, Tom McFarlane, Andy Iodine, Joey L. No, Haraway and Kai Lindsay finished on the lead lap. Andrew Cooper was in the gravel at Druid. James Ferguson was a lap down. And we lost Ursula Jordan as well before the end. But uh, as Marcus was saying, that fastest lap from Joe Jessup. And it was the exit to clear away. You don't rarely see it in tin top racing. You can cage and race and things like that, a big slipstream to the line, yes, but not this type of racing. But these, the engines in these type R's are really zingy, really accelerative. They, they pick up their revs so quickly. And uh, a good run out. You can see how early um, Jessup got back on the power, and it worked beautifully. And uh, down with our race winner, Joe Jessup, is Kieran uh, to have a chat with our top three. Thank you very much. Yes, a photo finish to, to end that race. I'm going to have a chat to the top three drivers. We've got Joe Jessup, Matt Wilkins, and Daniel Chapman. So let's go and have a bit of a chat over here. We're going to take the outside route. Ta careful not to get run over by any cars. And uh, we'll have a chat with Joe first. Um, so Joe Jessup. Wow, <laughs> that was uh, 38 thousandths of a second, I believe, was the difference. 38, 38 thousandths of a second, yes. Um, you really had to fight for that one. <laughs> How does it feel? Uh, it was a fantastic race. Uh, just super, super competitive uh, right from the beginning. So, uh, yeah, I was just on 100%, like, every single lap, every single inch of it. And, uh, yeah, Matt did a great job. He just left a tiny gap around that last corner, just managed to sneak up the inside. 
Now, there is obviously some, some talk of some rain um, coming later and obviously over the next couple of days and everything. How are you, how's your confidence going into perhaps even a wet weather session? I mean, it was pretty slippy in qualifying this morning, so uh, did some bits and pieces with the setup. So we're feeling okay. I mean, I've never really raced around here in the wet, so we'll just see how it goes. I think I'll be starting 10th for the next one. Well, best of luck and congratulations on the win. Thank you very much. I will try and get Matt Wilkins next. Uh, Matt? But Matt, if I could just grab you a second, sorry. Uh, that's uh, is that a bit a bit of pill to swallow? Almost thirty-eight thousandths of a, a second. On the last lap, but you know, we'll take a good result. Yeah, definitely. Obviously, you, ha you had a really good battle. Obviously, you've definitely got the pace there to to, yeah. to race for the win. So, yeah, is that at least like a more even playing field this time with the new weights and stuff? Yeah. Seems good. Yeah, definitely. Um, how obviously there's some some chatter of some maybe wet weather. Uh, how did you get on in the wet session this morning and are you confident if it is a wet race for your next one? Yeah, we've done quite a bit of wet testing because the weather's been bad this year, so I feel quite confident in the wet here. Yeah. Definitely, well, obviously, uh, commiserations on that, but uh, good luck yeah. off the next Thank race. You <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. And uh, we'll grab uh, Daniel Chapman next. Uh, there's a uh, third place man. Uh, Daniel, that was uh, quite an intense battle you were locked yourself in with for that race. How was yeah. it? It was really good to be fair. Really enjoyed that. It was a it was a good race from start to finish, and it was close all the way through, which is what we want really in tin top racing, isn't it? So, absolutely. Well, congratulations on the podium, Thank and you. good luck for the rest of the weekend. Thank, Thank you very much. And uh, we'll head to an ad break, and then on to the next race afterwards.